Hey everyone, hey guys, gals, beautiful people around the world. Dr. Mandel here with you streaming live. Uh, you guys have been so beautiful in these chat rooms. So I figure, you know what? You give me love. I'm going to give you a lot of love back. And uh, this program is going to be about inflammation. And I think this is going to help a lot of people. I think it's going to help just about every person out there because uh, every condition known to man, every disease, every autoimmune disease, Every situation that's known to man when it comes to medicine has some inflammation involved. Now, we don't really want to get held up into the names of diagnoses of inflammation because there's a million and one different types of diagnoses we can give you, like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, ankylosing spondylitis, gastritis. Anytime you hear itis in a diagnosis, we know you have inflammation. But the bottom line is, what do you do? I can tell you that every disease that is known to any type of doctor today has inflammation. It doesn't matter if it's in your intestines. It's a, you know, it's a colitis. If it's your stomach, it's a gastritis. Um, it, 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 it doesn't matter. If it's your sinus, it's a sinusitis. I want you to understand a little bit what these words are because we don't really understand enough. That we kind of fear it so much that we get lost in our thinking. And I want to keep things real simple for you. So uh, the first thing is, I will gladly uh, go ahead and share our, our link here. And the questions all have to be about inflammation. Uh, and that's obviously most people who are going to have questions will be. Um, and so the first thing I want to talk about as the chat room is building, because we're going to get a lot of people here tonight, the causes of inflammation. Now realize if you have something that's bothering you right now, uh, if, uh, if it's a toothache, if it's a, a muscle ache, if it's a a sacroiliac, if it's sciatica, uh, if it's gastritis, if it's acid reflux, if it's colitis, if it's IBS, uh, it doesn't matter. If it's a headache, it's inflammation. But the first thing you got to do is you have to ask why. You just can't fight the inflammation unless you remove the causation. So if you're going to treat a symptom, that's like taking a fly swatter and trying to correct the pain. That's not the answer. It's like taking a pill to try to cover up the symptoms. It's not the answer. The answer is there's something going on. There's something causing your problem. And I want you to get this. I want you to think, and I want you to really get to the, to the nitty gritty things and say, how can I help my body heal? Because remember, when you carry inflammation for long periods of time, other parts of your organs and tissues and hormones have to compensate for it. And as you start breaking down your body more and more, it's harder to repair and heal. So let's go into some very important things. And um, some causes, the most common, sugar, high fructose, corn syrup, table sugar. Uh, if you notice, you're looking on your, I want you to look at your labels. That corn syrup, that high fructose is a killer. Uh, it causes tremendous amounts of inflammation, puts a tremendous burden upon your liver, and it will affect uh, your immune system. And people who are known to have more high sucrose diets are more than all, are known to have more cancers uh, and are obviously more of an impairment of your, of your immune system. So I want you to understand that you need to cut the sugars because sugar is cut into resistive, directly tied into resistance, resistive uh, uh, insulin resistance, diabetes, fatty liver, cancer, chronic liver disease, we're all tied into it. And the thing is that when we start putting on too much fat, it's because we're taking in too much sugar. And that's what affects our visceral fat. And that leads to a lot of our, our diseases and problems with high blood pressure and other conditions. Artificial trans fats. Read the labels. If you're eating trans fats, those partially hydrogenated oils, uh, you need to stop. Like your margarines contain trans fats. People think that, you know, margarine? I thought margarine was good. It's not butter. No, margarine is poison because it's not natural. And there's, there's trans fats, there's hydrogenated oils, and then you need to be real careful about that. And obviously those hydrogenated oils will increase your LDLs, your bad cholesterol, and it will lower your good cholesterol, and it will increase your cholesterol and your trans, uh, your triglycerides. So if you're having problems or you're having high uh, triglycerides or cholesterol or Bad LDLs, you got to watch your those particular things when it comes to trans fats. Uh, a lot of your vegetable oils, your seed oils, you need to be careful. And this is why. Omega-6s, a lot of our seed oils, our soybean, our vegetable oils, they promote inflammation. 
we have high omega-6s, here's the problem, is that it becomes inflammatory because we don't have any balance with the omega-3s. Now, you can have omega-6s, and omega-6s are still healthy, but when we have too many omega-6s and we throw up out of proportion with our omega-3s, that's when we start getting lots of inflammation. So people may notice, you know, I have this kind of weird thing growing on my skin, or I have these rashes all the time, or, or you know, I have you know, this chronic IBS, this chronic condition I never had before, or now, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm bloated all the time. You need to watch those excessive inflammatory foods because it can cause it. The other thing is refined carbohydrates. Refined carbohydrates are those excessive sugars and refined foods, usually in the packaged foods, not in the whole state food. And those are the foods that spike up glucose and allow our insulin to spike up. Too much of it causes an overburden on the pancreas. It causes insulin resistance. It doesn't allow the, the glucose to get into the cells easy. So therefore, the pancreas has to work harder to continue to pump in more insulin because it doesn't know better. The brain's telling more insulin to try to get the sugar in the cells. And as this continues to go on and on, obviously, you become resistant. The sugars just don't get where they need to go. Remember, sugars go three places. One, they go into the cells to give you the energy. Two, they go into the liver or the muscle to become stored as glycogen. And three, they get converted to fat. So if you have too much glucose, they're going to get converted to fat. And that's why most people are fat, not from fat, but from eating too much sugar. So refined carbohydrates um, are not good. And I recommend, uh, I, have no pro I have no problem with carbohydrates. I think it's great as long as you have it with fiber. Fiber slows the assimilation of those carbohydrates, particularly those carbs that have a low glycemic index. You can look, look in Google glycemic index and you'll see the foods. Uh, my favorite fruits are berries, strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, blackberry. Those are great. And excessive alcohol. If you'd like to drink alcohol too much, that's going to be a problem because that will cause lots of severe inflammation. Not only that, you're going to retain uh, lots of fluid. Uh, it acts kind of like a, a non-diuretic. It's just going it, to, it's not good. It's not good. It can cause involvement to the organs, involvement to the liver, as well as the brain. Uh, it will increase your inflammatory CRP uh, markers, those levels. Uh, which is an inflammatory marker. So if you are having alcohol, I do recommend to cut back on that. And the last thing is processed meats. Now, there's a lot of vegans out there that say, I hate meats, but there's a lot of people that do keto. I love meats. There's a lot of people that do carnivore. I love meats. All right, but I'm not here to knock meats. I'm not here to tell you what you should and should not eat, but I am here to say that processed meats like sausage, bacon, ham, smoked meat, beef jerky, if it's processed, because some beef jerkies are okay if they're organic and they're not processed. But this is all associated risks of heart disease, diabetes, stomach, and colon cancer. These nitrates affect the colon. And a lot of these colon problems, these cancers are related to these nitrites. And these nitrates, these advanced glycation end products, these AGEs, uh, these are big, big problems. Um, so if you're cooking meats at real, real high temperatures for long periods of time, that can cause inflammation. Uh, meat is acidic. Listen, I eat meat periodically. I like meat once in a while. I'm not a vegetarian. I'm not a carnivore. But you just need to be aware of that, that uh, it can be potentially uh, very, very acidic. Um, let me go ahead and give you our link here. If you'd like to come on the platform with me, uh, we are building up our our uh, chat room. A lot of beautiful people out there. Thank you for coming out and tolerating my voice. Uh, I want to go into a couple of things. I made some notes here. And I will throw a couple different supplements out there that I think are really good. And uh, I'm going to review a couple important things that I think important. I'm just going to kind of skim through because I don't really have anything organized. This is on the top of my head tonight. Uh, alpha lipoic acid, one of my favorite things for nerves, inflammatory problems, diabetes, uh, diabetic retinop uh, retinopathy, uh, uh, any type of uh, anything to do with the nerves, neuropathy, even any other kind of plain neuropathy, alpha lipoic acid is one of my favorites. Curcumin, obviously the main component in turmeric, is extremely great natural inflammatory. And I will tell people that if you have any kind of inflammatory condition, any kind of problem you're suffering from right now, get on omega-3s. Omega-3s, if you don't take the supplement, you know, your fatty fish, your salmon, uh, your fatty tuna, uh, your walnuts, they have the ALA, the alpha linolenic acids. They got to be converted to the DHE and the EPAs. But 
Um, your good omega threes are really going to do such amazing things. You trust me. If there's any one thing I tell you to get on, if you don't take the supplements, eat your omega threes. And if you don't know which foods have omega threes, a lot of them do. Just Google omega threes. Uh, I love ginger. Ginger. I just put a little thing on ginger. You could just check that out earlier. Um, uh, resveratrol, uh, particularly those in the red grapes. Red wine is very good. Great natural anti-inflammatory. Spirulina. I love the greens. Anything with greens are, are excellent. The greens is alkaline to the body. And you know what alkalinity does to our body? It does wonders. It keeps, you know, the, the viruses, the bacteria from really accumulating in there because they don't like uh, alkaline environments. They like acidic environments. Uh, and let me just see something right here. Uh, you know, it's amazing. We, we look at the research out there uh, with, and we'll, we're going to go ahead and take, bring someone on the platform right now in just a second. But we look at the research out there. The, the biggest thing that stands out out of anything are omega-3s. There's a lot of great herbs, and I can share a lot of great herbs with you. Uh, and actually, by the way, if you like green tea, one of my favorites, uh, that green tea is one of the best antioxidants on the planet. Uh, and green tea does wonders for many types of ailments. It's a, it's a healer. It's a really amazing thing. Black pepper, peppering. We use black pepper when we take turmeric because it helps the assimilation of turmeric into the body. Uh, the other thing, by the way, when it comes to turmeric, if you're taking it, if it's not black pepper, uh, you're going to want to uh, have oils because turmeric is a fat-soluble vitamin, as well as heat it up. If you stir fry it, you don't need anything else. It will assimilate. Let's head over to uh, someone here in the stream. We have Naomi. I will go ahead and post uh, this platform. If you'd like to come up on the platform right now. Naomi, can you hear us? Uh, yes. How are you, sweetheart? Good. What, what, can we, what would you like to ask? Well, I've just been watching your shows and getting more knowledge and understanding of medical and keto and weight loss and the journey I'm on. But I didn't know it. I was going to ask you a live question. I was just coming on. I thought it was just a different broadcast. Um, if you have something real quick, I'll go be more than happy to try to help you. Um, well, I haven't finished exploring all of your videos, but I know um, I, I am, have started taking like the collagen Collagen. Is that helpful? Yes. Collagen is that helpful? Yes. Collagen is, is great. Collagen is the, the matrix of your, your hair, your nails, your skin, your, your face. It slows down aging, helps prevent wrinkling. It, it affects your, your ligaments, your tendons, your muscles. You are collagen. And as we get older, we lose collagen. And for those who eat lots of sugar that have bad diets, you're going to be eating and stripping away collagen. So, yes, supplementing collagen, uh, I believe, is a great natural. would help you from an anti-inflammatory aspect because it is uh, as part of the matrix of your body. It kind of mends, it, it molds, it, it grows, and it's you. And so collagen is very important, even those who have muscle injuries, chronic back problems, neck problems, joint problems, people who have conditions who haven't healed, just chronic old injuries. Yes, I recommend collagen. I take it. I think it's great. Uh, okay. you, usually the ones you'll find out there are type one and type three. Those are the most common out in the market. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I first I started taking one that had type one and three. Yes. But then I found one that's um, beyond collagen. So it has all five. That's fine. Um, that's good. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. you know, there's a lot of controversy of, of which ones don't work best for certain things. But as far as I'm concerned, if it's natural, organic, None of it's going to hurt you. I mean, yes, collagen's collagen. You know, your body, I'm sure whatever it doesn't need is going to get rid of. Right. Okay. So, well, thank anyways, you. Anyways, take care, okay? Thanks you for uh, thank being you. with us. Bye-bye now. Okay. So we, we're talking about uh, these different herbs, these natural anti-inflammatories. Um, you know, it, it's so important. Other things, too. You want to reduce inflammation. Um, not only do you want to cut back on these inflammatory foods, I like to say the whites you know, these whites, the, the, the flowers, the salts, the, the, the sugars. Uh, but losing weight is another big thing. Uh, and the reason is this, because then when you have more weight, you have those, those adipocytes. Those adipocytes uh, give off these type of uh, hormones. And uh, we can say inflammatory uh, hormones or inflammatory, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, but it causes inflammation in the body. Uh, fat cells, too many fat cells causes inflammation and can lead to more inflammation. So as you start losing weight, guess what? Your symptoms are going to get better. And it's good to make time for some exercise, manage your stress, because we notice that stress 
will increase our cortisol levels. And when we have increased stress, obviously we get more inflammation. It causes a whole vicious cycle of, uh, of our uh, adrenal glands that secretes uh, uh, adrenaline and adrenaline uh, norepinephrine that then affects the pancreas. The pancreas then secretes uh, insulin. The insulin then starts, uh, uh, is there because the, the, the glycogen stores in the liver and the muscles start relieving glu re re secreting glucose. So we got this whole circuitry going on. So you got glucose being released from glycogen. You got insulin being secreted because there's glucose and you got the hormones from the pancreas keep kicking up. So it's a whole vicious cycle. So what happens is like a, we're just trickling and that chronic stress is really dangerous. So you need to really manage your stress. But uh, one of the biggest things for people who have ADHD and um, you know, I have someone in the family who has it. Uh, one of the greatest things that helped him is cutting down on sugars. So a lot of these conditions we have, again, is inflammatory. So we need to reduce inflammation. And uh, as I said before, I love green tea. I love uh, matcha, 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 the old matcha tea. I think it's great. Another great thing I like for inflammation is magnesium. Uh, magnesium is a, a great mineral. It's, it has over 350 different uh, metabolic functions from the body. It reduces infl inflammatory markers, CRP. It provides many other benefits. Uh, it will help lower blood pressure. It will help you sleep better. And it can really do a lot of uh, great things for you. Um, so let me just see a couple other things here. Uh, here's a question that came up uh, in the past about eggs. People say, what about eggs? Uh, are eggs inflammatory? The interesting thing is, according to research, uh, they say it's pro-inflammatory. They said that uh, eggs actually help inflammation. And that's a whole interesting study. But whenever you eat eggs, um, I always recommend, if you can, organic. It makes a big difference. Uh, it just makes a big difference in the body. Uh, the other thing that came up, questions were about honey. Um, honey is also a great natural anti-inflammatory. In a lot of my concoctions that I talked about in the past, you know, we always say a little drizzle of honey, and you get a lot of uh, people who may be diabetic and say, you know what, honey is bad. I'm, I'm, I'm a diabetic. I'm taking insulin. I'm taking, you know, uh, uh, oral oral tablets, you know, for for my sugar, but you look at the difference between like uh, white sugar, table sugar, and honey. The glycemic index. You see, you can't always go by the sugars. Remember, when you when you're eating honey, you're not drinking honey like you're drinking milk or you're drinking you know water. A little honey is actually great. It has great natural. Remember, this is natural. It has great uh, antimicrobial effects: antibacterial, antiviral, antiparasitic. Uh, antifungal, and it can do wonderful things, not only when it comes to wound healing, like Manuka honey that we talked about the other day, but when it comes to treating the throat, coughs, uh, healing, you know, the, the respiratory tract. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people out there who are really into natural things that have lived on honey, and I'm sure you can get up and you can teach it more than I can, but honey is good. Honey is definitely good. Um, you know, we talk about honey as a broad spectrum antibiotic. Uh, the, here it's against, uh, they say gram positive bacteria, gram negative bacteria. Um, and uh, it shows a lot of research when it comes down to killing these bacteria. So um, I don't know how we could ever knock honey. I think it's a natural thing that's produced by, by nature. And I, I, don't, I don't see anything wrong with it. So uh, let me go ahead and give you the link here. If you want to come on the platform, if you have a question or two, we'll take it. We're going to make this a program almost over because we don't want to carry this too long. Our other program has been real, real long. And uh, we really kind of touched on a lot of really important things of inflammation. But this program is all about inflammation. And um, if you are suffering with chronic inflammatory problems, you know, my big thing I love, I love fish oil. I love the curcumin, the turmeric. I love the green teas. If you just tuned in, ginger is one of my favorites. I just love the ginger. I, I try to drink it every day, ginger. Um, it, it's, it's so, so, so good for you. Um, people like the red wine. Uh, zinc is another big one. You know, you may not like, uh, like oysters and other things, but there are foods that have zinc in it. Zinc is a great natural inflammatory, uh, actually, as well as capsaicin. Uh, when it comes down to, uh, any type of the chili pepper, the cayenne pepper, uh, those are really good natural inflammatories. It's a great blood cleanser. It actually opens up the arteries. It actually can actually reverse as far as I'm concerned, uh, arterial sclerosis and placking, uh, 
Capsaicin is one of my favorites. Great for weight loss. Spirulina is one of my favorites. All those green things are excellent. Uh, I just loved it. And I love Boswellia. Boswellia is another great one. And what comes up quite often is the pineapple. And the pineapple has bromelain. And yes, bromelain is a great natural anti-inflammatory. So if you like pineapples, uh, go for it because I really think it's a big thing. Let's head over here to uh, Marilyn. You there, Marilyn? Yes, I am. Can we, see your, can we see your face? We don't see it but a black how screen. You, how do I do that? <laughs> kind of, you have a cam that you can focus back down. I see the bottom part of you. Come on. Yeah, there you go. A little bit more. A little bit more. Keep going. There oh, you there go. We go. Okay. Gotcha. There we right. go. Gotcha. I, am so, I am so blessed to be able to speak to you because I have been through so much with my health. And you have been helping me. Whether you know it or not, you've been helping me through everything throughout your videos that you've been posting. And it's helped me understand what my body's doing, what my body's telling me. And I'm still battling with inflammation as we speak because of H. pylori and overgrowth bacteria candida. Yeah. So here, here we go. <laughs> More. Okay. So right. um, my I, question. I, I, I can comment on that real quick for you because okay. we all move quick. Number one, okay. mastic gum. Mastic gum will kill H. pylori. All right. Oh. Mastic gum will cure your stomach. And oh. I do recommend one of the best things for H. pylori, you can Google it, uh, is a cold pressed, organic cold press. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, right, okay. Hold, write it down. Uh, pine nut oil. It will kill pine it. Will oil. Kill it. Pine oh. nut oil. You get online. Okay. Oh. Organic okay. pine nut oil. It will kill H. pylori. Okay. And it will heal your stomach. So do your homework really? on that. And, and, and okay. you must cut out the sugars. I do. You, okay. Candida <laughs> cannot survive without yeah. unless you give it sugars. It can't survive. I know. I know. I know that. It's like, you know, it's a battle. What do I do? I'm I'm taking away from this. I'm taking away from that. And it's still happening. So that's yeah. what I need to know. Even next fruit, thing. Next thing. Fruit. Next thing. You got to load up on probiotics. Yes, I just took it. I 80 just billion, 100 billion, load up I on those probiotics. How many billion is there? How many, what's a billion? 60 billion. Okay, good. Okay. This I would, one I would, for H. pylori. Good, good, good. Stay yeah. on that. Cut the sugar. Do Look into things I told you about. I think it will help you tremendously. Drink lots of yeah. fluid, sweetheart. You help me with everything. I just wish we could meet. <laughs> yeah, we will. We all meet one day. Don't worry. Yeah, right. Bless you. you Keep too, doing sweetheart. what you're doing. The Lord loves it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay, let's head over to uh, Maskwell. Can we, are you there, Maskwell? Can we see your face there? Hey, hello, my friend. You hear us? Hello. I think Maskwell is free. Okay, can yeah, you hear us? Okay, what's your question? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, so go I ahead. Go ahead. So um, I've never been a, a, mar I've never been a marijuana user, right? I used it for the first time because in the state I am, you know, California, it's legal, right? Yeah. And um, I've been coming down with a, a, a marijuana fog from what I heard. And it's been like, I, said, I took it on Saturday at, I say, 6 p.m. with a couple of my friends. You know, we were going out for some drinks. We're uh, seniors in college. <laughs> so, you know, we had a little bit of fun. And um, it's been lasting since since Saturday at, that you know, at night. And I don't know what I could do to help dissipate it and, you know, to help it go away. I've tried working out and stuff like that, but Very um, my simple. mind just feels like flailed. Like it feels like okay. uh, the the best thing to do is hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Just cleanse your liver out. Just cleanse your brain out. Cleanse your blood out. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Just just drink lots of water. That's Mother Nature will do the job for you. All right. All right. All right. Blessings to you. Okay. A great way to end the program, guys. Um, We'll take one last one. Uh, Nad, Nad, you there, Nad? Hi, Dr. Mandel. Yes, real quick, sweetheart, because we're going to end the program. Sure. Thanks for having me on. So I currently have um, fibromyalgia. Yes. Adenomyosis. And um, more recently, I've been diagnosed with idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Okay. And I'm just wondering, like, what I can do, like I'm currently, I've changed my diet, cut out the sugar, started healing my gut, but what can I do to really um, get all my terrible symptoms to stop? 
Well, the, or to start going away. They're, they're, they're totally two separate entities of those conditions that you're having. The fibromyalgia is just a group of, 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 of conditions you're having in certain areas that they categorize it as a, a syndrome. So they call it fibromyalgia. I don't buy fibromyalgia. Now, we can go into that some other time because um, I've seen, I don't tell you how many thousands of patients. Um, this is a fairly new thing in the last 10, 15 years, fibromyalgia. That's a, it's kind of a, a weak diagnosis, but it's still inflammatory related. So yeah, okay. you still you still got to get back to, to, to your diet. I really don't know what exactly you're eating, but I would go through a lot of the things that we talked about in this program or even look back at some of my videos, but you really need to be on a straight pro-inflammatory diet uh, to try to get off those inf that inflammation because a lot of the foods you potentially are eating that you may not think are they may not think are not inflammatory that may be inflammatory. So um, we'll have to continue that another time. But another thing you may want to look into is black seed oil, and I'm going to be doing a program on that. Black seed oil can make you do wonders, wonders, wonders for inflammation and for many other conditions that you potentially may have right now. Google black seed oil, and I probably will do a live on that maybe tomorrow or the next day. So if you want to wait, we'll go into that then. Okay? Sure. sure. All Thank right. you so much. God, God bless you. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye right, now. Okay, uh, guys. Uh, we are 27 minutes after into the program, and I want to thank everyone out there from my heart. If you have not subscribed to, the, to my channel, please do so, because my only intention is one thing, not numbers. My intention is to see you, your family, your loved ones healthy. That's it. There's no other thing but that. I want to say I love every one of you. All of you stay very safe, and we will come back real, real soon, continue to give you great information, uh, share these videos, and I think we're going to be able to touch a lot of lives. God bless you. Uh, God bless your family, your friends. Just stay well and healthy.